We did it. We made a casual horse tribal deck. Yes, it has horses. Yes, we enjoyed making it. And no, it doesn't cost a billion dollars. In this video, we're going to show you the amazingness that is white, green, casual horse tribal. Some alternatives to our deck list in case you want to make it even spicier. And we'll be showing you the prices of the cards throughout using TCG player pricing because the deck is cheap and putting it together will be hilariously fun. If you want to see the list or purchase any of the cards for it, first link in the description. Let's do this thing. We all know what prompted this deck tech, and that's Crested Sun Mare, 5 mana for a 5 5 that makes all other horses you control indestructible. And at the beginning of each end step, if you gain life this turn, create a 5 5 horse token. So this deck has a bunch of life gain and horses, pretty self explanatory, but hey, when you woke up this morning, were you thinking about making a white green horse tribal life gain deck? Because if not, I'm gonna help you out with that. Also, Crested Sun Mare is the most expensive card in this deck, so enjoy that. We'll begin at the bottom of our horse curve with Tarpan, one green mana for a 1-1 horse. Yes, it was eroded to be a horse. When it dies, you gain one life. Now, the Sun Mare does grant indestructibility, but if you let Tarpan die in combat, then play the Sun Mare second main phase, you're looking at a nice 5-5 replacement. Remember, the Sun Mare doesn't have to be on the battlefield when you gain life for it to matter. Tarpan is a great sacrificial mare to get your 5-5 army started. Moving on to two drops, a rare sight, a non-horse creature. Nyx Fleece Ram isn't a horse, it's a sheep. I know that. But we honestly needed another early drop that gave us consistent life gain, and the ram does just that. It has a huge butt, is really difficult to attack into, and it gives you life at the beginning of your upkeep, perfect for creating horses and making sure we don't die before we get our stud online. Our other two drop is Teamer Charger, a morph horse fits perfectly here. It's another early drop, but this time an aggressive one. You can play it morphed, but even face up, a 3-1 is going to do a lot of damage on its own. And once the Sunmare hits the battlefield, a 3-1 with Indestructible is pretty terrifying. There weren't very many options at the two drop slot for horses, so it's good that the Charger was there. We needed him real bad. Now things take a bit of a turn, we're running for Mirror Entity. Mirror Entity has Changeling, which means that it has every creature type at all times, even when it isn't on the battlefield. But when it is, this is a late game threat that can even make Nyx Fleece Ram dangerous. By turning everything we have into horses, even our non-horse creatures get all of our horse benefits. As well as a huge power toughness boost, especially if we can use this ability late game. Our other Changeling in the deck is at the same mana cost, Avian Changeling. Listen. I don't know about you, but I wanted to see a horse fly, and we just didn't have the ability to get Pegasus in here. It had to be this way. Avian Changeling is a horse that flies, it's at a mana cost that worked for us, and it friggin' flies. I'm done, that was just enough for me. Timber Mare is next on the list, and it's easily the most belligerent card we're playing. It has been eroded to be an elemental horse, so we're good on the creature type front. Now, Echo can be annoying, and tapping down everything else, also annoying, but it has haste, and crashing in with a 5-5 is nothing to scoff at. In a casual game, haste ends up being huge when you have it on a huge creature. And sure, you have to Echo it next turn if you want it to live, but that's another 5-5 horse that will probably get indestructible at some point. How many 5-5 horses do you want? Infinite. That's how many. Get with the times, people. Our last creature is by far my absolute favorite in the entire deck besides the Sun Mare itself. Say hello to Brass Herald. Six mana for a 2-2 Golem. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. When it enters the battlefield, reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all creature cards of the chosen type revealed this way into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Creatures of the chosen type get plus one plus one. Welcome to how we're going to keep the horse train rolling. Brass Herald does only drop as a 2-2, but it buffs all your horses, and you get to dig four cards deep and draw all of your horses among them. We're playing 24 horses. Yes, that includes the changelings, because changelings are all creature types all the time, even when they aren't on the battlefield. Brass Herald is going to hit something. 24 horses, like 40% of the deck. When we tested it, the Herald got at least two to three horses more often than you'd think. Very rarely did it get none. Just a cool tribal golem that gets us more horses and buffs the ones we currently have. It's great stuff. As for spells, we're running a playset of Recumbent Bliss. We need some removal, and this was perfectly on theme. You get to pacify your opponent's most dangerous creatures, and you gain life on your upkeep, triggering your Sun Mare. Since the enchantment doesn't go away until your opponent destroys their own creature or the enchantment itself, this is a delicious way to keep your 5-5 horse engine running. We're also playing a couple Dromoka's Command. No life gain here, but it's solid removal, can mess with opponent's enchantments, and it can buff your creatures even more. Kind of difficult to fight against indestructible horses, you know? Love it. 
Now, you might not think we have enough life gain. That's fair. It's a good thing eight of our lands gain life on entry to the battlefield. We're running Blossoming Sands and Grape Pelt Refuge. Why? Because we can. This deck isn't super fast, so entering the battlefield tapped won't hold us back that much. Plus, a few of these are bound to enter after our Sun Mares on the battlefield. Just more free 5-5s. Five in addition, we're running four Temple of Plenty, six Plains, and six Forests to make 24 lands in total. A bit higher than you might expect, but our average mana cost is a little higher than normal, so we have to make up for that. Now, this is a casual deck, and since casual decks let you include whatever you want, we have some more options in case you want to go even more life gain focused and less horse focused. The deck we just showed you, priority on horses. If you want to gain more life more often and focus solely on triggering the Sun Mare, we can help you with that. Say hello to Words of Worship, Soul Mender, Oracle of Nectars, and Renewed Faith. All of these are solid life gain spells. What's important to remember is that the Sun Mare can trigger on each end step, not just yours. So most of these life gain cards were chosen because they can work on your opponent's turn, giving you even more 5-5 five, five horses. If you want to include these in your list, you can absolutely do that, but you'll have to decrease focus on horses as a tribe. It's really up to you. More life gain, more horses, both options are here. You just have to decide which path to take, which field to graze in, which saddle to use, which spurs to equip... Okay. I'm done. I'm sorry. All right, one last thing. Tribal upgrades. We kept the price of the deck relatively low. If you want to buy it, you can get the entire thing for around $40, probably less to be honest. The Sun Mare alone is over a third of the deck's total cost. If you're interested in upgrading its tribal chops, Steeler Resolve and Door of Destinies are both insane. The Resolve gives your creatures protection against any removal or disruption that would target them, and Door of Destinies simply makes them beefier and beefier as the game goes on. In addition, I would grab some Adaptive Automaton and Metallic Mimic to replace some of the Changelings and maybe the Dramokas Command. Both awesome tribal cards, but a bit over $5 each, so out of our price range for the initial build. If you add in all of those, you have a pretty sweet tribal horse deck. So what do you think about horse tribal or horse life gain? Which strategy do you prefer? Personally, the horse tribal deck was a lot of fun to play with. It's hilarious playing out Tarpan and a bunch of other horses you'd never play otherwise. I love it. The life gain version? Real annoying with much less horses. You decide what you like. If you enjoyed Horse Tribal, you can click the first link in the description for the entire list. And if you want any part of the deck, it's super cheap. It's under $40 right now, so grab away. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.